what, what can you really do? You got to guard him is what you have to do. And we didn't. And we tried multiple people on him. We guarded the pick and roll different ways where we tried to blitz him and chase him down. We tried to double him at the post. And uh, individually and as a team, we didn't get it done with TJ or with, uh, or with uh, Booker. You've gone up against Steph, LeBron, James Harden. So what was Devin Booker doing tonight? Because it's not like you guys haven't faced high scoring players so far. I mean, he does, he does that. He's got the ability to do that. He is an elite scorer with a big bounce and a pretty stroke. And uh, there's a, you know, empowerment that he obviously has with that program where they expect him, they need him to score. And, uh, you know, when we started looking at, for instance, their game in Boston, and they are competing against, to me, the league's best defensive team in the Celtics, and they're right there. It's a four-point game, and you knew they had that in them. You knew that as a group, they had the ability to 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 compete. You know, there it's the NBA, and uh, I feel like with uh, with Devin, he just got that cocky bounce in an empowerment in the environment that they need him to produce in, and, and he did. As a team, what, what went wrong with the defensive we, we we just didn't have it tonight. We did not have it at any place. Um, I think that there was some lack of communication on some breakdowns with obvious switches. We got switch group that communicate normal, like a flex cut, for instance, underneath on the baseline or something going on on underneath out of bounds play. And I think there was just no sting to anything that we did. We, we're going to talk about Booker and we're going to talk about TJ. I think Tyler Eula, Ty, Tyler uh, Eulis also had a hell of a game. And I think uh, just defensively, you know, we were flat tonight. As a group, we, we did not have any bite to what we were doing. Do you feel like a missed opportunity in the first half to you that Booker was struggling early and you guys could have, that could have been the time of the game where you really get out to a lead and then you let him get into a rhythm and then it goes off the rails from there? A game like this is, is without a doubt a missed opportunity. You know, when you have a goal to make the playoffs, we're all going to look at somebody that's like, you know, pick a number, 41 and 41, something 42 and 40, and it's, you know, it's going to be that close. And you, you, you only have so many times that you're able to poke yourself in the eye. And uh, tonight was one of these, those for us here at home. And uh, we, we walk out of this gym not feeling great at all about very much of what we did tonight. What did you think about the way uh, Ben played, given how sick he was? I mean, I give him credit because he had been in a bed. Um, you know, I think we tried to spread his minutes around where we, we, we didn't try to, you know, ask for too much all in one clump. I thought he was okay. You know, I thought he was okay. I still, you know, feel as a group to, to understand the balance of some open threes and finding Joel is always that slippery slope I sit in my chair and think about. And, uh, you know, I think that Ben tonight was, was, was okay. Do you look at a game like this, like how you were talking about it before the game tonight, you said, you know, if they have great stat lines, it doesn't matter. And does it feel like maybe Joel and Ben had kind of an empty stat line night? despite them scoring 20-plus points? I, I don't even, like, I, I think I know almost what you said, but it didn't feel it, and it certainly doesn't feel it after you lose. And I do. I stand by what I said. Not much matters when you don't win. That's the bottom line. And, uh, you know, I think when we were, and we still are, like sometimes I even get too far ahead of myself where you, you recognize you're still growing these guys. You know, like Ben's played how many games in his career and Joel's played how many games in his career and all that type of stuff. It's just not as palatable to me nowadays, although it is factual, it doesn't feel as right. And uh, I think that, you know, disrespecting, not fully coming in like you got that appropriate fear is, is bothersome, but it happens. It happens especially with young guys. And the real trick to the, all of this is to let it happen less and less frequently. And tonight, somehow, some way, we'll find something out of this and we'll come back ready to fight uh, against the Lakers. What do you have to be aware of with young teams, you know, the Suns tonight, the Lakers coming up on Thursday? What is it about young
young teams that can be I mean, it's what we all experienced ourselves. You come in, you really, you know, don't have that much to lose. You're, you're playing basketball in front of 20,000 people, and there's a bounce to what you do, and there's a, you know, feel-good sort of mentality that's not sort of draped with uh, that much pressure. And, uh, you know, you, you see young guys play free. I thought Tyler Eulis, you know, played free. I think that we all appreciate the veteran side of Tyson Chandler. Like, he is a man, and, you know, he really did a good job on Joel tonight. Um, I feel, to your point about the Lakers, it's that thing we saw tonight. They're going to come in with a bounce, and they're going to play free. But you guys are in last in the league right now in fouls per game. I think it's, you're averaging just above 23 a game. Do you attribute that to youth? I mean, I bet you tonight, so... I think some of it's that. I think some of it's we try to, like, wind them up. You know, like, there are portions of it that aren't helpful. It isn't helpful. Um, you know, it's, it, it's stuff that you're aware of. You know, fouling too much, fouling shooters especially. Um, you know, fouling when teams are in the bonus. Um, we had some tough plays, some tough fouls late in the game that sort of you know, really didn't allow us to, to, to move forward. Um, you know, Jared had a tough one down in the corner, but it's something that we have to get better at. What did you see the uh, Suns do tonight defensively on Covington? I mean, I felt, I felt like they did a good job with all of our guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure why you're asking about Robert. Like, if you'd asked me about Ben and Joel, I could answer that far more freely. I think Robert missed some shots. You know, I think Robert missed some, some open looks. He had a down night. Um, their length at times got to him on the shot sooner than others. You know, he's recognized as one of the league's best shooters. I give him credit for that. But as far as schematically or anything out of the ordinary, I think it was just professional awareness that he can shoot. Took away a lot of air time space. Right, you mentioned uh, Jared's technical there. I think TLC also got hit with that flagrant down there under. Are, are those more frustrating as momentum killers for you versus? Jared's is. You know, Timmy, I looked at it. He tried to go after the ball. They, they thought he raked his face. You know, like the, the Jared situation is, is stuff that we have to get better at. Does that feel like those are more self-inflicted versus, say, Devin Booker coming down and hitting the shot? Yeah, it does. Yes, it does.